this is one of the most highly customized yachts that Ferretti Group and Custom Line has ever made. She's hull number four of the eight delivered and, amongst a long list of amendments, has a larger and better equipped galley, a bigger pantry, is wheelchair accessible and has an engine room that was stripped back and redesigned from scratch. She's on the market with Oxygen Yachting for 18 million euros and in this video we have an all access pass to show you every inch of this fabulous yacht. I'm Jack Haynes, you're watching Yacht Buyer and this is Horizon. Let's start back here in the cockpit on the main deck then. Now she does have a beach club. It's not gonna be very easy to show you that here in the confines of the port in Antibes, but essentially the chancel comes down to water level. You have a little drop down area where you can put some seating. Obviously there's enough space to put bean bags and there's a canopy for over there as well. You can create a really nice water level space and there's direct access from there into the toy chest as well where you've got a couple of jet skis, scuba gear. We'll look at all of that later on. And then up here in the main cockpit, one thing to point out, about Horizon, she doesn't carry a tender. She has a chase boat, an 11 meter chase boat, which they tow a lot. So they've really beefed up this deck gear here. You can see you've got the Lofrans windlasses back here, really big cleats. If you're towing an 11 meter boat a lot, you really want to know that your deck gear is up to it and, it. and it certainly is on this boat. Then here into the cockpit, you have a really nice, shady, safe, practical space. Obviously centers around this lovely low slung seating area where you've got a couple of coffee tables, armchairs and sofas. It's lovely, very, very well protected and, and obviously nice and shady too. And you've got an extending shade as well so you can extend a little bit of protection out over the beach club too. You have boarding gates on both sides. So if you're side to a key, you don't have to go down to the bathing platform to get back up again. You can just step straight off from these which are on both sides. Down here on the starboard side, there's storage at the very end, and then you have access to a terrace here, which you can also access from inside the saloon, which we'll look at later on. And then down the port side, you have access up and onto the foredeck. Again, we're gonna go and check out the foredeck later on in the tour, because for now, I think we should stay on the main deck, because we lead into the main saloon, and then ultimately right forward to the owner's cabin. Let's head on in, the Star Trek style magic doors, great for the crew as well, if they're carrying stuff, don't have to worry about using door handles. And then we're into the peace and quiet of the saloon. And it's a really lovely space. All of the furniture here is Monotti. It's very restrained. It's very cool and classy. You've got this nice mix of the walnut timbers and then lighter materials on the carpets and the sofas. And there are splashes of color all over the place through the artwork as well. So they pop as you walk through the main deck, you get these nice flashes of color that just brighten things up a little bit. Worth pointing out, this is a custom feature. You've got the double wine fridge here, which is hidden away nicely just inside the door you'll have spotted the television that swings down from the ceiling so you can put it up and out the way if you're not using it but yeah it's a fantastic size and it faces this seating area really well so pretty much everybody apart from the people sitting here have got a nice view of it then we're into the internal dining space you have a dining table here for 10 people all of the crockery tableware is stored neatly in these cabinets over here and this area aligns nicely with these big floor to ceiling windows on this side they open up these doors push apart and then you're out onto the terrace which is a really nice effect when you're out at sea you have access down here on the port side to the galley and the crew space which we'll have a look at later on and you can actually separate this area off with a pocket door here so if you want a bit of privacy away from the crew then you can enclose it and have it totally private in here and it's a beautifully finished space as well particularly like the the marble used here on the tabletop looks really classy and again it's one of those elements that just pops out of what is quite a neutral interior and it was like that and the lighting from the ceiling look really good moving forward down this side we have a stairway down to the guest accommodation on the lower deck which we'll look at later on and then we'll get to another major feature aboard horizon which is her accessibility for wheelchairs so down at the passerelle it's wide enough to allow a wheelchair on board and there's a passage through the boat and then you have this unique addition which is a lift so this goes from here on the main deck to the upper deck directly into the captain's cabin and we'll look at that later on when we're up on the upper deck but the chair can go in there and then really easy transfer between the two decks. And moving here to port, we have access to the galley. There's a passageway forward down to the crew accommodation. And then we have the galley. And this is another area 
which is totally bespoke to this boat. They made it larger than any other 42 Novetta. They stole a little bit of wardrobe space in the owner's cabin to extend the size of this galley. The owner often spends six months on board, so cooking on board is really important. That autonomy to be able to provide top quality food on the boat is a really big part of what he wanted to achieve and the galley feeds into that. So you've got triple induction, Gaganau, Hobbs here, you've got twin professional Miele ovens, you've got an upgraded extraction system up here to clear all the fumes out of this area. You've got a pro Miele dishwasher, for example. It is a, a really highly specced area. Of course, you've got your all your cooling here as well, and you've got a smaller sort of pantry area aft. But yeah, it's a very professional, impressive space. Heading out of here and carrying on forward though, is where you find the owner's suite. Before we do that, just have a little look into the day heads. Obviously this is where guests can come in the day if they don't want to go down to the lower deck to use their bathrooms and you have that day head here. And then moving right forward here on the main deck, you're into this owner's suite. Obviously you have this little study area here, which is lovely, you know, beautifully set up to do a bit of work here with a nice view out over the water. Every cabin, every zone has got its own iPad, which is linked to the AV and the air conditioning. So you can set the music, the AV, TVs, and the temperature all within the iPad. It's all bespoke to each cabin. Over on this side, the owner has a walk-in wardrobe. I mean, we say they gobbled a bit of space to extend the galley, but this is still a, a vast storage space with, with lots of space for clothes and bags. You can separate the cabin itself off using a pocket door here, and then we're into the main space. The carpets have been upgraded from standard throughout. You can really feel that it is absolutely lovely underfoot. And yeah, this is a, a really glorious cabin. You're raised up. You have wonderful views out through these hull windows. You've got yet more storage space over in this corner. Really lovely big bed that you can walk around very easily. There are no obstructions underfoot. Towering headroom as well. I'm six foot and I've got loads of space over my head. You notice pull tap here. That's for an emergency exit up onto the foredeck. Nice big TV set in this bulkhead here. And then through this bulkhead is where you find the owner's ensuite bathroom, which has a real spa feel to it. I like this little bench they've got running along here. You've got the twin sinks and then separate shower and toilet cubicles. So someone can use the loo while someone's having a shower. They're both a really good size and enjoy a lovely view. They just get the end of the hull window. So great amount of natural light and lovely views out while you're having a shower as well. So that's the main deck. Let's head downstairs to have a look at the guest accommodation. It's a four cabin arrangement down here on the lower deck with a pair of twins forward and two VIP staterooms more amidships there. Identical, so we'll just look at one of each. So we head first forward here into one of the twins. You see you've got your separate single berths here. There's also a Pullman berth, so you can drop down a bunk here, create three singles in here and in the other twin cabin. So that gives you a really good amount of versatility for charter. It's a very nice cabin as well. You've got lots of the same elements as you're gonna see elsewhere and in the owner's cabin, just on a smaller scale. So you still have your TV up there. You have a nice separate wardrobe. You have a, a really decent ensuite. And then if we head amidships to one of the VIP state rooms, these really are quite lovely. These have got double beds. Again, floor's completely flat, headroom's great. You've got a nice bit of hull window here with natural ventilation if you want it. And the blinds are all electric. Touch of a button on your bedside table. I should say actually the bed frames and the nightstands are completely customized throughout and all the marbles being upgraded over standard boat as well. But the blinds are nice because you can have this sort of slightly opaque style where you get a bit of natural light but still some privacy or you can press another button and it lifts right up. So you just have a nice clear view out over the water. Again, storage is very nice. You've got a nice run of storage under here, under the television. You've got a proper walk-in wardrobe over on that side. And then a lovely ensuite with a big separate shower cubicle, toilet over on this side, and obviously your sink, a bit of storage in the middle. From here then, let's head up onto the upper deck. There were access points to the upper deck, both internally and externally. We'll see the external staircase in a moment, but let's first have a look at this upper deck lounge here, or sky lounge whatever you want to call it. But this is nice, really intimate space, very cozy. You can imagine it's nice of an evening, but it's also elevated. So you've got great views from here in the day. But yeah, it's nice and intimate, very comfortable, of course. Again, you have the same sort of low slung, inviting furniture. Love the card table here, tucked in the corner underneath another enormous TV, which light downstairs slots up into the ceiling. You can see it angles as well. So you could swing it all the way around to face out 
the aft deck as well. Talking of the aft deck, let's pop out there through another automatic door. And this is a nice part of this deck is this sort of mix of indoor, outdoor living. They connect very nicely. Again, you've got another really nice dining space here for all the guests on board with comfortable furniture, bit of low slung stuff back here, nice day bed. Obviously you've got the canopy that can come up and down. This one's manual, you can see the carbon fiber poles they put in and they attach it here to the overhang. The other thing that's custom on this boat is you see you've got the glass balustrades all the way around. It's the same on the sun deck as we'll see in a, in a minute, but it's about safety because they often have kids on board. You want to make sure they're not going to topple over the edge, but also maintaining the look and the views, of course. You don't want to be blocking off the views from here. So that's a, a really nice effect. Stairway down to the main deck, stairway up to the sun deck. We're going to go up there in a second, but there's much more to show you on this deck for now. So let's step back in to the air conditioning. They've boosted the air conditioning massively on this boat. The owner was very conscious of making sure it could perform really well. So it's about 360,000 BTU or something, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very effective. Let's just say that. Over here, you have a sliding door out onto the starboard deck. So that's another access point out onto deck from within here. If you want to slip out that way, manual door, slide it across and out you go. And actually while I'm here, I mentioned the iPads. Every cabin has one and every zone has one. So for example, this big TV here, I can control from within the iPad, but you've got your gaming, you've got your Sonos system. It's all here. It's all uniform across the boat as well. So wherever you are, you should be able to control the AV and the air conditioning. And the pantry is another area that they upgraded. They made it a bit bigger. They've put in a full height fridge freezer as well, a Miele fridge freezer, which you don't normally have. You've got a dumb waiter as well, so the crew can pass food and drinks between this deck and the galley without having to go up and down the stairs. Got a sink here, coffee machine, that sort of thing. Head forward. Starboard side, we have another day head. Again, meaning guests don't have to go too far to use the toilet. And this on this deck is one of the areas where the lift comes up to. So as I said, between the main and upper deck, the lift comes up here. But very cleverly, if we go into the captain's cabin, it also comes up here. So somebody in a wheelchair can come straight into their cabin from the main deck without having to negotiate doorways and things like that. They're up and there's another door here for the lift that is straight into this cabin. And it's quite rare to have a captain's cabin as luxurious as this on a boat of this size. Obviously you're right behind the bridge here, you're away from the other cruise space, so it's very private, it's spacious. It's good enough to be another guest cabin, which is what it's often used for. And you'll note that it has its own ensuite and that has an extra wide door, again, so that it's easy to get a wheelchair through. It's very cleverly worked out, it really is. And then right forward, is where you find the business end, the bridge. And this is another area where the owner and his team, his captain, put their mark on the space. Specifically, really, they wanted to have room for paper charts up here. Obviously, there's a lot of electronics, but they still want to have the, the paper chart capability. So you've got these two nice big chart tables on either side. In terms of electronics, you have these four 24 inch Hatalan screens up here. They're controlled remotely. You've got the controls here set into the, the seats on the captain's chairs. And then for monitoring, you have touchscreen 24 inch screens down here as well. So from up here, the crew can run through every single system digitally. It's all up here and they can flick between things like engines, tanks, electrical feed, lighting, ventilation. It's all here, twin screens, plenty of redundancy. Very easy to see it all in one place. Now in terms of performance, she's got a pair of 1600 horsepower Caterpillar C32 diesel engines and a fuel capacity of 39,200 litres. They've actually upped the fuel capacity from the standard boat by putting a couple more tanks underneath the storage in the jet ski garage. So she has transatlantic range and at 10 knots you're looking at about 3,200 nautical miles of cruising range. She'll top out semi-displacement hull at about 17 and a half knots. But that 10 to 12 knot cruising range, that is where Horizon lives. Elsewhere in the bridge you've got this nice raised seating area, obviously a great space for crew but often passengers, guests might want to come and join the crew and take in the view and enjoy the ride. So that's a nice space to have there and obviously gives the crew a little bit more space to, to do some chart work or paperwork if they need to. From here, you also have access on both sides through doors out onto the foredeck. So let's head out there now.
Out here then you have wing stations on both sides. So the captain, these have got covers on, which you obviously take off to use it. You take those off and then you have access to the throttles and the thrusters and you have them on either side. So no matter which side you're coming in, you're looking right down the side here. You can see the side of the boat. You can see right aft. Of course, crew on a boat of this size, they're all connected using earpieces and walkie talkies. So they have people talking to them the whole time. But yeah, you have a great view from either side out here. The other extra that they fitted to this boat was an electric stern thruster, which you can run only using the generator. So if they need to make fine adjustments without having to fire up the engines, they can do. And they're saying actually, a lot of time they use that when they're launching the jet skis out of the side garage. We're gonna look at that in a minute, but that means that they can just adjust the boat without having to fire up the engines and make it a bit kinder to get those in and out of the floating garage. Onwards on the foredeck though, this is another really nice living space Lovely big sun pad here. Obviously you've got this split L-shaped dinette with the tables. Nice bit of shade from these canopies here. Obviously these, much like aft, you've got poles here that slot in and you've got the canopy overhead. But yeah, it provides a really nice bit of shade here. There's a bit of storage directly underneath the windscreen there. And there's a huge amount of storage underneath. This whole section lifts up and you have a vast storage area down there. There's all sorts of kit swallowed up down there. But yeah, very, very useful space for the crew to be able to stow gear. And then moving forward, you get to a working area, of course. There is a little sun pad right forward. Nice little spot to chill out. But then this is another area where they've really upped things and upgraded all of this ground tackle to, to really premium stuff. The boat has cruised extensively in Greece and Croatia where you may anchor in your mooring, run the anchors, then run back towards the cliffs and, and tie a, a line on. So the captain wanted super strong winches. You've got upgraded anchors. I mean, these Muir winches here are the sort of stuff you're gonna see on a fed ship. It really is properly beefy stuff. This is a boat that was properly built for purpose. They had a, a use in mind and they've made all those adaptions. And that is what Custom Line have been able to do to create, tick that wish list of exactly what they wanted. There's one more outdoor space to look at then, and that's the sun deck. This is a really standout feature on this, on this model, the huge sun deck. It is vast for a boat of these dimensions. It, it's so long and spacious and it gives you lots of space to play with and you get nice segregated areas here. So after you've got sun beds, again with another canopy with attachable poles, then under here you've got some really nice chill out area underneath the cover of this massive hard top but yeah this is shady very relaxed if you just want to cool off chill out in the shade this is a perfect place to do it and I mentioned the glass balustrades all the way around and well, again you see them up here they're very subtle but they add a really nice amount of protection and you know, if you have got little people running around then they, they can't trip or, or, or fall over so you have plenty of protection but they don't encroach on the look up here and certainly don't encroach on the view out really good bar here Nice, big, substantial stools. And then, yeah, this is a great setup. You've got grill, you've got ice maker, you've got your fridge, sink. Again, another iPad so you can control all of the AV and the lighting up on this deck. Proper stuff. I love the bar top as well. It's really, really nice, beautifully finished. And then, right forward, we have the hot tub. This is another upgrade. It's got a boosted heating element. They don't want to lose any temperature at all. They want to use it in cold climbs and you want to make sure it really heats up properly and it will do. And yeah, it's a nice size. I love the way they've integrated the steps and this lovely stainless steel railing and how you've got some sunbathing space on the outside. So people who don't necessarily want to be in the tub can still come and hang out and chat with the people who do. And again, a nice amount of shade up here if you don't want to be in the sun, but very easy to bring down in the evening when the sun's cooled down a bit and you do want to be exposed to the sun, you can just whip that down and then you have this lovely exposed jacuzzi and seating area. Well, those are the main living spaces then. The last place to check out are the oily bits, the engine room and the crew quarters. There are two ways to get to the engine room aboard Horizon. There's an access point on the main deck on the port side, or you can get through the beach club, which is a much more attractive way to do it and, and slightly easier access as well. But you can see the beach club arrangement here with the transom right down at water level. You've got this sunken area here where you've got some seats and you've got some storage and cooling space here. Another thing they did in the design was they moved the water maker out of the engine room. So that's different to the boats that have gone before this because they want to maximize the amount of space in the engine room and that was just gobbling up room. So that's got its own little position here and then we have the first of a few watertight doors so this one is up and into the garage where the jet skis live so in here you have custom scuba rack here for all the scuba tanks you've got a workbench you can see you've got all your life jacks and all the paraphernalia you need for scuba 
and using the jet skis, we've got twin sea dew jet skis here. And what I was saying up on the bridge deck about maneuvering with the electric stern thruster to make it easier to flood the garage is, is down here. You've got a, a side hatch here, this area floods, and then you can float out the two jet skis. You've got a winch here to pull them back in as well. So they just push out through that door in the side there. There's also a slot up here for a sea bob where that can charge. As I said, no tender on this boat. They've got the chase boat that they, they tow. But yeah, these are the two, the two jet skis. This is where all the fun happens. And then if we keep moving, forwards through another watertight door it's a little bit noisier so you'll have to exclude that but we're down to sort of a technical area this is the other access I mentioned if you come down from the port side deck you drop down into this area from here and then up here this is basically power system so shore power control starboard genset port genset that's all here really easily accessed in this section between the garage and the engine room and then right forward through another watertight door we're into the engine room proper where we find these two lovely big CAT C32 1600 horsepower engines. And this is a space that the owner and his team completely paired back, redesigned from scratch effectively in the name of redundancy and be able to maintain the boat on the go. So it has a custom fuel bunkering transfer system. It has an oil change system built in effectively with a clean and dirty tank so you don't have to be carrying clean or dirty barrels of oil. You've got twin 80 kilowatt collar generators. It is redundancy after redundancy. You can just see the banks of fuel filters down here, the transfer pumps behind me. It's all beautifully labeled. You have directional flow as well on the pipe works. So you can see where all the fluids are going. It really is immaculate. And as I referenced earlier on, the owner will spend up to half a year on board this boat. And the captain told me that during all that time, they've not lost a day of cruising because of the redundancy they have in here and because of the ability to do work on the go and not rely so much on shoreside supplies. That's the engine space then. Last place to look at is the crew quarters. The crew space on horizon is forward on the lower deck, so we're sort of underneath the owner's cabin now. And this is the crew's private space. This is their mess here. They have this dining area here. It's not quite a galley, but they've got space for a fridge and a coffee machine. Of course, they have use of the commercial spec galley up top, but just to make a quick snack, then they've got their space down here to do this. And you've got the individual bunk cabins running forward. They are being used, so we won't pry into those private spaces, but you get a sense of the idea of the space. And in the season, she can cruise with nine crew on board. Bear in mind, you've got the captain up in his own cabin on the upper deck, so that leaves space down here for, for eight further crews. So plenty of space for crew on board the boat and nice that they've got this private area that they can live in privately away from the guests. That's it then, that is Horizon. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you did, please do give the video a like and she's on the market with oxygen and yachting. I'll put a link to the page in the description of this video. If you'd like to watch another of our tours of a boat similar in size to this, and then we have one of the Ocean Alexander 37L from the Miami Boat Show, watch that if you click up here and if you'd like to subscribe to the Yacht Buyer channel you can click up here. Thanks for watching.